Uh, today we're doing another Doctor Who video, continuing the trend of doing the top 10 best and worst stories for each Doctor. And today we're going to be looking at the ninth Doctor, Christopher Axton. But of course he's only got 10 stories, so we're going to be ranking them. Or you could say we're doing the top 10 best stories and the top 10 worst stories in reverse in the same video. Number 10 is Boomtown. Now, I don't dislike this episode by any means. I think there are some quite funny moments when, like, Margaret gets chased and when they're eating in the restaurant. Although I think the whole kind of subplot of, like, Rose and Mickey having a slight sort of turbulent part of their relationship, and I think Rose was kind of unlikable in this episode. She, she, should, she just, like, decided to go without Mickey. And I think the Doctor was kind of stupid to trust Margaret. Obviously, she was going to betray him but you know overall, overall decent episode and i think it was you know jack and you know rose and the dots they all had good chemistry but it's just it's only really here by the process of elimination number nine is the unquiet dead i mean i think the real reason this episode's kind of low is because like it's set at christmas but it's not a christmas special which i found kind of weird and the overall story was kind of forgettable but you know, it was an interesting setting of Victorian Cardiff, and I quite like the idea of the ghosts made of gas, coming through like gas lamps and stuff. And obviously the interactions between Charles Dickens and the Doctor were pretty hilarious. And the nice way of like how Gwyneth made her sacrifice by, you know, sort of killing all the gas by burning it, which was quite a noble ending. And overall, Good moments, but fairly forgettable parts to the story. Number eight is The End of the World. And yeah, I do like a lot of the characters on the ship. I found that there's like quite, they're quite, all quite interesting. And uh, Lady Cassandra's ending was pretty hilarious. How she's like moisturizing it and then she just popped and that was it. Um, but I just, it was kind of hard on the side. I don't really know, I can't remember what her motivation was for trying to kill the people on the ship and yeah like no one saw the world ending but i mean it's reasonable because they were trying to save their lives um but yeah i mean not an amazing plot but you know again great moments especially with like the doctor and how like jade sacrificed herself so that the doctor could go past those turbines and stop like the, the ship from like exploding or whatever but, you know, I thought it was pretty good. Number seven is Father's Day. Now, I do like this episode. It's a very sort of interesting concept of, like, the consequences of time travel and how you've got to be careful of what you do. Um, yeah, I think it is really interesting how Pete really sort of, he realises what's happened and then he goes to sacrifice himself to you know, basically save the world. But I feel this episode didn't quite go to its full potential. Instead of having, like, going to the future and finding out all of the different things, the way the world would be different if Pete hadn't died, they instead have these um, Reapers, which weirdly don't appear again, which isn't... I mean, it's kind of explained how they're not actually, like, time police. They're just predators that happen to find it this time. It's just weird that we haven't seen them again and so i was thinking if this episode could be a bit more like turn left it would have been better but what we got was still pretty good number six is aliens of london slash world war three i mean the first half not a lot really happened and although apart well apart from like the pig crashing into big ben on a ship and the uh, doctor and Rose returning home only to find that they've been a year late. Then the second half it really kicks off with Harriet Jones, who was a fairly likable character, not an amazing character, but I think she had good chemistry with uh, Rose and the Doctor. But also like how Mickey and Jackie were properly involved in the story and they were actually helping to save the world with them and how like the sl the Slidine are um you know they are people that they're disguised as like just humans i just think i mean the farting joke i actually quite like i i think farting is funny uh so i 
didn't like dislike that bit at all. Um, I just also quite like the how the ending of how they were able to, you know, they took a risk of trying to explode. You know, they put like a bomb near like the room that they were trapped in, and it was worth it. And I, I thought it was quite an interesting two-parter. Number five is Dalek, and I mean. This episode, the Doctor is kind of unlikable, but it just shows how like much of a kind person that Rose is to the, like the Dalek, and how it's quite weak at the start, but then it goes to show like how sort of powerful the Daleks really are. It's one of the few episodes where the Daleks are kind of scary. They're able to um, like it was able to like go through the doors. It was able to elevate, but in the end, it killed itself, which was kind of like noble in the end it didn't really it kind of just explained a lot about the daleks i think it was just a reasonably good way of reintroducing them number four is the long game and i just kind of like the sort of setting of how on satellite five there are flaws and there's a mystery of floor 500 and they don't know what's there um i mean the actual climax isn't that amazing but I just think there are really good moments with like the Jagrafess and the editor, played by Simon Pegg. Um, I think Adam really kind of gets his just desserts at the end. I mean, I don't hate him as much as everyone else does, but it was just so funny to see him get that sort of implant in his brain and how his mum clicked her fingers and his head just opened, which I found, I thought that it was just so hilarious. Yeah, I mean, a lot of just quite funny moments in it when they first arrived and there's like people are just like selling food and like shouting and all that which i thought was a pretty funny way to you know do the episode but i mean yeah not i think it's a slightly underrated one i feel not many other people like it and whilst the plot's not great it was just a really good idea and setting number three is bad wolf slash the parting of the ways and I love the beginning bit with all those, like, game show things. When the Doctor ended up in Big Brother. And it's just as soon as they found out that he, he was there, they had, like, the music playing. But the reason it was, like, a futuristic version. And how these game shows are, like, really dangerous. And obviously the moment when Jack Harkness was being with those two robots. And they, like, took his clothes off. And then he, had, and he shot, shot them by shoving a gun up his ass was so funny. And he's like, you really don't want to know. But I think the real, like, godsend of this episode is the Weakest Link bit. And I, lo I love the Weakest Link. I think it's such a great show. And how I like how the android was actually voiced by Anne Robinson. And the whole sort of tension of, like, who is going to be shot next. But it turns out, in the end, it sounds like it's not actually as bad as they thought. They're not actually killed. They're sort of displaced. But, yeah, uh, the Weakest Link bit was just funny... It was exciting. I, I just loved it. <sighs> yeah, but then there's even more of a surprise when they found that there were like Daleks in this story. It didn't even seem like a Dalek story at first. And when, you know, Ro Rose was like separated from the Doctor and then she was able to get back, that was really, really satisfying. And this is a regeneration story, but I feel this one has given a slightly different flavour to other regeneration stories. I feel the other ones are often kind of a bit more emotional the whole kind of story is based on them like dying well, i'm especially like you know the time of the doctor and twice upon a time although i mean yes i did actually really like the end of time but i think this one is much more dignified it wasn't like about it was only like the last few minutes where we realized the doctor was going to die i just feel it was quite just amazing like how like, the, doc the doctor rose and jack again great chemistry it just proves to be like a really strong two-parter. Number two is Rose, which I think is such a good way to start the series. I mean, if you're going to have like a new Doctor, you've got to start with a banger and number nine so did. It was just started off the life of like an ordinary girl, like working in a shop. But then it, there was like the sort of scariness of these autons and then suddenly the doctor comes out of nowhere and saves her but then it's the whole mystery of them her and clive trying to find the doctor it was a little bit like love and monsters if you think about it but 
this episode had just so many hilarious moments. It was kind of a light-hearted episode, especially like it, it did look a bit dumb, but I think that was what made it even more amazing when Mickey got eaten by the wheelie bin and then he came back well, wanting pizza, p -p -p pizza, which is just so funny. And then the, 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 like he was kind of the fake him was like, you know, asking Rose where the doctor is. And the doctor just comes out of nowhere and just like, you know, puts the cork in his face. I mean, the, the climax itself wasn't amazing, but there were just, this episode had just so many great moments. And it was just so, the timing of it was just so perfect when like the doctor just appeared out of nowhere. It was just such a great way of, you know, starting the show. And it was, it was just, it really brought life to the revival series and i'm really glad they put this one first for obvious reasons there are no honorable mentions and we'll move on to number one and the number one best doctor episode with the ninth doctor is the empty child slash the doctor dances interesting setting wartime britain is i always i always find that like a really interesting place and the whole, like they chased like a bomb at the beginning we didn't really know what, how that how did that lead to a child because you don't really like a child with a gas mask on his face because you don't really know what he is at first. You find like he's Nancy's brother. Well, turns out he's actually Nancy's son, but it's just a wonderfully creepy concept of like the child saying, "Are you my mummy?" and they turning people into like sort of zombies. And again, like Jack Rose. It was the introduction to Jack as well. I think, I think Jack was just such a likable character just such a legend um and just interesting throughout the story you find out more and more about him as he's that jamie is not actually a villain as such he was just the result of a mistake with the nano genes and like who could and obviously when they they're able to figure out an ending and how to end this sort of plague by reuniting him with his mummy and they found out how he's actually just the gas mask is just sort of fused on using the nanogenes but they were able to find out the, the dna and they were able to get him back to life and then get all the other people back i mean who could forget the ending it was just such a happy ending and he's even got like a dance in his step at the end he's just like rose i can dance yeah but anyway it's just such a great ending pretty much engaging all the way through and that is all the reasons why i feel that the empty child slash the doctor dances is the number one best doctor episode with the ninth doctor see ya